today on Divorce Court. I'm here at Divorce Court today because I'm tired of Ryan. He puts me second, he put me last before his family. I'm not before anybody. I'm currently pregnant with his baby and I feel like he's not here. Communication with Ebony is a lot of verbal abuse, um, a lot of accusations. I feel like I have an attitude because he's put me through so many things. Um, I have valid reasons why I have an attitude. Ebony overanalyzed everything. She thinks my family doesn't like her. I would like the judge to tell Ryan, um, step up and be a man, you know, put your family first. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Ebony Craig and Ryan Griffith. The two of you have been together for five years. This is a before the vows. You've been together a long time, but you can't quite manage to get down the aisle, and you don't know whether or not it's a good thing, so you came here to ask my opinion, which I will give you. I gave you a compatibility test. I took a look at that and your paperwork, but I'm going to start with you, Ms. Craig. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship? Why you love him, but you're not quite sure this is the way to go. I love Ryan. We have um, a 15-month-old um, daughter, and mm -hmm. we have uh, one that's on the way. I have okay. four months pregnant. Um, we, you know, he was my friend. I'm not from Florida. I'm from New Jersey, so he was probably the first person I met coming um, to Florida. Um, and um, he, he could be a sweetheart, but I think that he allows people to run over our relationship as far as, because he's quiet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit more vocal th than he is, so uh, I think he thinks that I have a temper because of that. But I don't, I don't believe that. I believe some things you have to set boundaries. You can do it with respect, but he allows some family members to run over him. Give me some examples. Okay, for instance, um, when um, we move, we wind up moving together and he we move with some of his family members, mm -hmm. or one of his family members, rather. And um, he, they would pretty much, they made decisions together or, you know, not they wouldn't sit down together and make decisions, but it kind of was a thing that they were used to doing because they lived together prior to us. Right. So they, you know, there were other family members come over, they would wash, you know, their clothes. Nobody would tell me. Um, Why should they tell you? Is that your house? Well, it was my, it, it, it was actually me and his house and they moved in with us, me and him oh, was on okay. the lease. okay. And um, it was just like, I wasn't a part of anything. Right, I, I, I got They kind of put me in the dark with everything. Um, the house would be, you know, a mess. I would try to keep it up. And, you know, they just, it just was, a, you know, just a mess there, you know. Well, you said to me that your primary complaint with Mr. Griffith was really that you don't feel like your opinion counts. And I think that's part of it. Mm -hmm. But can you give me some examples of when he's ignored you or he's not making you a priority? Oh, there's a few. Um, it was a time where I can say where um, after I had the baby, I had... Um, postpartum depression mm -hmm. and I went to him about it and he um, kind of nudged it off it didn't matter but he and a co-worker talked about it and then that's when it was oh now I understand but when I was trying to explain it to him he didn't want to hear it. it's like I don't have a value to him mm -hmm. he doesn't he doesn't value anything that I said anything that somebody else says he could give me another example another example was um, when we had our, our baby um, I would um, the doctor, you know, would she she ate more than what she, you know, most babies kind of eat more than mm -hmm. usual. So I decided at five months I would give her a little bit of cereal. He wasn't okay with it, but when his family members had said that, you know, it was okay. So you can say anything and he won't agree, he but if somebody agree. else says it, he's yeah. right on board. He even, he even said it yesterday. I never agree with her, you know. He Mr. Mr. Griffith, what do you have to say about that? No, it's just me trying to learn more about the situation, uh -huh. thinking about the coworker. Um, he went through it, so... I was just asking, like, what... What's this about? Yeah, so I did that just to learn more about it. And I called her, and I, I apologized to her. I was like, now I understand. I learned more mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's what I do with everything. I try to learn more about it because I'm kind of new to the situation. Right, right, so right. So all I'm trying to do is just learn more about things to make it easier for her. Right. And what about the decisions in the house, like when you let family move in with you guys and... She feels like you made decisions around her instead of with her. It, 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 it wasn't like that. It's just um, I didn't communicate with them, and I, I explained that to her. Cause what do I, you mean, I didn't communicate with them? Like, just letting my family members know about the sleeping arrangement and mm -hmm. um, about things that was bothering her. Um, if she would have just came to me and just um, explained that she didn't like this, I would have understood more about it. Mm -hmm. But um, she likes to get um, very angry and hot-headed. Mm -hmm. 
So it's kind of hard for her to listen to me. Yeah. Tell me about the car accident. Well, um, I, he had went away to a, a, bas a baseball tournament, and um, as he left, I had gotten to a, t a bad car accident. It totaled my car. Mm -hmm. um, as w when that happened, I had to go into the hospital, and they decided to keep me. The day that I was getting discharged, they decided that they would keep me to have the baby, induce mm -hmm. my labor. Because you were pregnant at the time I was of the pregnant accident. At the time. Yes. So I called Mr. Griffith, and I told him that they were going to induce my labor, and opposed to him saying, OK, I'm coming, or or, you know, are you all right? It was, but what about the basketball game? That was his first thing. What about the basketball game? Mr. Griffith, did, it didn't, it did didn't you say that? Like that? Tell me how it happened. Well, she, she called me and she, um, she said I didn't sound excited. Um, I wasn't excited because of all the stuff we was going through, we broke up so many times, the arguments. Right. And it's like I was, I was kind of afraid of, of me and her going through, like, raising a child. So, um, yeah, I, I, I should have like stepped up more and was like, I'm, I'm rushed, but I was like kind of far away. Right. And I did thought she was coming home, but when she called me, um... He was at home, which was 10 minutes away from now. Yeah, because I, I thought she was coming. I thought she was coming back home. I thought she was getting discharged. Then she called me. And, and said they were going to keep Yeah, me. but, and, and I didn't, I didn't sound excited. And mm -hmm. that's how I felt. I was, I was kind of scared because... To the all, point he were you guys come. having difficulty during that period of time? We did, but at this at the same time, we had kind of made up in some sense. And, and although we were having problems, you know, he wasn't in in the situation by himself. We both were having the issues, but that one situation doesn't have anything to do with the other. I waited 15 years to have another child, mm -hmm. so it's like you took the joy away from me. You took that whole experience throughout the whole pregnancy. We argued, we fight. He wasn't, he was vacant. He was like a robot. He wasn't, he didn't have no emotion. Even now, me being pregnant, he doesn't have any emotion. Well, I'm gonna talk to Mr. Griffith about how he feels. It's like every, every other day, she'll break up with me because something with one of my family members. Mm -hmm. And then she'll, she'll block me and I can't call her and she'll tell me to move on. This, this happens a lot. Mr. Griffith, she, said, she says that you were not excited and not a part of the pregnancy all the way throughout and, and that you were not uh, an interested party. What is your response to that? It's like a lot of um, miscommunication, a lot of um, her being upset and a lot of, of verbal abuse. And, um, Give me some examples. It's like every, every other day she'll break up with me because something with one of my family members. Mm -hmm. And then she'll, she'll block me and I can't call her and she'll tell me to move on. This, this happens a lot. Mm -hmm. So with me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go through the situation and, and she's blocking me and, and how can I get in touch with her to, to tell how I feel right. about the situation? Yeah. She's... Now, is the relationship, has the relationship been choppy all the way throughout? Um... I would have to say, yeah, because he, he doesn't stand up. He doesn't... If I get upset, it's not... I, I have valid reasons to be upset. Even when I was... I, okay, I told him to move on because I was upset. I'm emotional. I'm mm -hmm. pregnant, for goodness sake. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't vacant. When he wanted to have sex, he knew how to get in contact with me. He knew how to come and see me. But he always texts and stuff. I'm, I'm old in some ways. I don't want nobody texting me. Call me. Let me know that you really care about me. Listen, let's talk about it. He... he Are you easy to talk to? I could be easy to talk to. I really could be really, really... I don't think you I really are. could. I really could be easy to talk to. I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I am stern and things like that. I'm not... You're rigid. I, not, well, yeah, you are. I'm telling you. It, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a question. I'm telling you. You're I'm rigid. Not. You should be joyful about this, and this is how you should... Explain. I saw in your paper. You know what you, know what you said? You said, he doesn't talk to my belly like he should. Mm -hmm. You know, the baby in the belly. Mm -hmm. My husband never did no nonsense like that. <laughs> I don't think it's something that a lot of guys would, you know, maybe some do, maybe some don't. Mm -hmm. But that's like, he's not talking to my belly. He's not involved. I think you got some very strict ideas about how he should express himself and how he should feel and the way he should tell you about how she feels. And when you don't get exactly what you want on the money, you just... Da -da 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 in his direction. Did I get it right? Exactly. <laughs> it's in your paperwork. That, that could be true to some degree, but everything is 
you know, some way selfish in a, in a sense. Like, everything is about if it doesn't benefit Ryan, it doesn't benefit I anybody. I think you don't like it when he has a differing opinion. No, not 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 true. I don't I don't think that. I think I, I'm I don't if if he have a different opinion he he don't he don't have an opinion unless I say if I say something if we have a com a lot of the conversations is because I'm bringing the conversation. Ryan is very quiet. We are different, mm -hmm. and I do come off I probably do come off more aggressive than him because I, I speak more. Mm -hmm. He's very very quiet. He really is. But, uh, but but I can read. Yes. I know what you I know what you told my people, mm -hmm. and, and and I'm gonna move off of this because I think. I think I know what's happening here. My understanding is, is that you see signs of cheating and I want to know what they are. I really do love Ryan. I accept Ryan for who he is. Ryan does not accept me for who I am. He always says, well, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Is it fair to expect your partner to always meet your relationship expectations? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. You believe he might be cheating on you. Why is that? He's always a messenger. Um, every always day. a messenger. He's always a messenger, like a Facebook, where they, oh, you can go in messenger. Gotcha. There's nothing in messenger, you know, in the morning before he goes to work. Sometimes he could be in there two hours, and I only know that because I have to get up and go to the bathroom. We only have one bathroom. So sometimes, I, you know, I always look at the the clock to see what time, just to see what time it is. And he's in the bathroom for hours sometimes. He really is in the bathroom for hours sometimes before he have to go to work. And, you know, when he's at work, he's in messenger. So even to the point... How I, do you know he's in messenger? Because I'm, cause I'm now want to see, you know, is he in messenger? Why is he in messenger? All the time, he cheated on me through messenger. That's, that's how he initially started talking to somebody. He admitted that. He said, I don't care. You told me to go move on, so I moved on. He asked the girl... What, you know, what... what well, did you, you did tell him to move on. Not, not, not really. That wasn't, I wasn't That's saying... That's what you said, I, I, exactly. I, I mean, I said it, I was, I was hurt. I was angry. We were going through stuff. I mean, you but know, you know, so, you know through women, my anger, I, I said... Women come in here all the time. This is just so dumb. Women come in here all the time. I told him to get out. I told him we not together. And I don't want you no more. And then they move on and you get mad. That's ridiculous. You a grown woman. Mm -hmm. If you don't want the man, you let him go. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Mm -hmm. If you want him, don't put him out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I put him out. I told him to move on. He can't live here no more, but, you know, he can't see nobody else because I really didn't mean it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's ludicrous. Uh, other than that one time, because I don't think it counts. If somebody says move on and, and you move on, mm -hmm. then that's what you did. Have you been, when you're together, are you in the messenger talking to other women? No, I, I get my phone, I go on Facebook, I look for something funny to post, and that's it. She thinks it's on Messenger, but when you in, on Facebook, it's, like, yeah. active. Mm -hmm. But how can you know that? And at work, my phone is, is on, so I'm working, so she thinks, she thinks I'm on Messenger. Well, well, have you seen anything incriminating? No, outside of him talking to the girl and he telling me that, no. Okay, I got you, I got you. You're out of the house now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm staying with my She brother. kicked out, she kicked you out? When? Yeah. It was probably like a month ago. Why? Because we got into an argument. Over what? I guess everything. <laughs> it's like when she gets um, upset, she wants to kick me out or she wants to block me or... Do you really want to get married? Not, to not, who he is? I don't, honestly, Your Honor, I don't mind who he is. I really don't. I really do love Ryan. I accept Ryan for who he is. Ryan does not accept me for who I am. He always says, well, I wouldn't do that if I was you. But, like, I keep telling him, we two different people sometimes. Like, he's, he, he, he's just very, we, we're different, and I'm okay with that. I just feel like, just, you know, stand up for me sometimes. Don't make me, people, his family don't like me because of the things he did. Instead of him saying, you know, uh, X, Y, and Z, I didn't, I never, I never disrespected any of his family members. I got you. I got you. I understand what's happening. How can you tell if a breakup is really a breakup? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Ms. Craig, I'm gonna talk to you. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm not telling you that you're less than. I'm not telling you you're not pretty, you're not worthwhile, you're not important, or you're not a serious individual. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm going to do is free you from the insecurity that is keeping you from 
being his wife. I know you going to I know you believe I'm wrong. But I sit in this chair an awful lot. And you're crying not because you're right. You're crying because I hit the nail on the head. You are frightened. People don't get that angry and that pushy and that rigid and keep talking about, he doesn't defend me, he doesn't defend me, he doesn't defend me, unless you feel weak and insecure inside. And what I want to tell you is, he's a quiet, retiring dude. That's who he is. You said you didn't mind who he was, but you do. You want a soldier out there fighting for you, and he's a quiet dude working from the back. And if you're not comfortable with a quiet dude working from the back, he's not the dude for you. You keep throwing him out. You keep, you know, his family, and he doesn't do this for me, he doesn't do that for me, and he ruined all my pregnancies. If I had one-tenth of those problems with a dude, I'd have been gone. You don't seem to like anything about him. And I know you love him, and you have two kids with him. I don't, th I don't think he's comfortable speaking up to you. I don't think he is comfortable expressing himself. I think he is very, very uh, desirous of making this, this relationship work, but I think it's if he's just a little bit off dead, dead stop center of exactly what you want, it's all hell coming his way. And I think that if you step back off all that angry, if you step back off all that insecurity, I'm sure he's done some things wrong. We all do. But you never let it go, and you are so disproportionately angry about small things that the problem is you. You've got to, you, you've got to engender the love that you, you, you have to generate the love that you desire. You can't beat him into it. And I think that you're hard to be around and I think that you keep putting him out because you don't feel safe and secure and you do it to him before he could do it to you. And I don't want you to be hemmed up and held prisoner like that. I want you to be free to feel comfortable and feel loved, even if he does some dumb dude stuff. And dudes do some dumb stuff. <laughs> they really, really do. Oh, oh, you got postpartum? Well, what is that? You get over it! I mean, they just do dumb things because they're not us, and they don't see the way we see and feel the way we feel. But, but my concern is for you you who you are inside, because you're far too angry about far too little, far too often. Always, you know, just... Because it's not like that. Mr. Griffith, be calm, be cool, speak up. You know where her fears are. Mm -hmm. So you have to step up and step into the role of the, of the father and the husband that you want to be. I don't think y'all are ready to get married by a long shot. You need a whole lot of individual counseling, mm -hmm. and then after you get that individual stuff together, couples counseling. Quit procreating in the meantime, because y'all ain't got it together. You with me? Yes. Good luck to the both of you. This matter is adjourned. We were supposed to go to counseling, and he did not follow through with that. Do you mm -hmm. think you guys will take that seriously this time around? Um, if he doesn't, I will. Everything comes um, with our fin financial situation, because right now I'm like the only one working and I'm like doing everything and it's hard to go to counseling when you don't have money.